Hey there, Script Reader Pro family. Today we are going to spend some time talking about Squid Game, the biggest show out there. So if you're interested and you've seen the pilot, come on in. Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. As I said off the start, we're going to be talking about Squid Game today. We're going to be talking about why, as a pilot, it works incredibly well. If you haven't seen the, at least the pilot of this show, go and watch it now and then come back and watch the video. Pilots are everything right now. Everyone's writing one, everyone's looking for the next great show. So having an unbelievable pilot that does things incredibly well is a great thing to have in your back pocket as you go out there looking to get staffed, looking to sell your show. And Squid Game is the number one show in the world and probably will be for a very long time. It's an interesting concept in the idea of taking something simple like children's games and raising the stakes. And if you watch the pilot, one thing you'll really notice is that they raise the stakes incredibly well continuously from the beginning right up into the end. It's a perfect example of how you build momentum and intention and mystery and suspense and character, how you set it all up, how you build it, how you pay it off. So we're gonna go over the pilot. Again, don't wanna spoil anything, so watch that pilot in its entirety, one or two or three times. Use it as study material to understand what is working well in this specific piece of writing. We've all heard the stories of how it's taken 10 years for that project to actually be picked up from someone, that the writer, director tried to get it so many different places, tried to get funding, producers involved, and no one really went for it. They didn't find it was realistic or whatever the reasons may be until someone came along who was interested, saw the potential and went for it. So let's break down different elements of this pilot to make sure that you understand what you can take and put into your own writing. The first thing is the opening sequence is somewhat of a flashback, right? It takes us back to when the leading character was a child and it talks about the squid game and how he felt stronger and more important when he made that specific move to win that game than he ever had in his life. And at the end he says, when you get put out, you die. And he says it again. And it's setting up the theme, the tone, the interest in what things are going to become as the story progresses. So it's a great setup to really give us everything that we need to understand the game, to understand the stakes of that game as these children games get put into adult real world situations. From there, we go in and we meet the character and we see him at home. And if you pay attention, you'll see a few things that the writer does to really make us like this character. Not just like him because he's not all perfect, he's shady, he's broken, but he's interesting in the choices that he makes. He's complaining and he's making excuses to his mother, but at the same time, he cares about his mom and he doesn't want her to go to work and hurt her back. He wants to provide. He wants to be that good son, that good husband, that good father that he just hasn't been able to be yet. So right off the bat, we feel for this guy because of his situation. He's down on his luck. He doesn't have a lot of money. And most people can understand that and connect with that. From there, we see him out in the world and we see him gambling and it's a problem and he then wins and he's on top of the world and he does something where he tips that cashier. It shows us that he's nice, he's likable. How can you not like this guy? He then has his four million won and he's ready to go and celebrate with his daughter and again, he's trying to be a good father and, and make his daughter's birthday special. So we like him. We want to see this man succeed. As he's out on the street, thugs come, money collectors come, debt collectors come, the loan sharks he owes money to and he runs. And when he's running, again, it's very important to pay attention to the choices here because as he's running away, he slams into a young woman and she falls to the ground and he stops. And he's got these guys chasing him and he could keep going, but he doesn't because he's a good guy. So he stops, he goes back to her, makes sure she, she's okay, gives her back her drink, apologizes, and then gets up to run again. So he risked getting away because he felt bad, because he wanted to make sure she was okay. The fun of that is this woman shows up once he wakes up in the game, 
but at the same time, she's the one who stole all his money. So there's so much wrapped up in that moment, but the key thing to pay attention to is not only is it a setup because we see her later and we see the scar on her neck and that all computes, but we also care about this guy again. And then the next thing we see is him being beaten up in the bathroom. So it's one thing on top of another on top of another that we just want to see this guy succeed. We want to see him win. And then this man in a suit comes along, challenges him to a game. It's a beautiful sequence. It's fun. And at the end of it, he has finally won after surviving a whole bunch of abuse by this man he's playing the game with. But he's succeeded. And so we're happy for him. And he still doesn't quite give in to pressures because he doesn't feel he's at the bottom of the barrel. He still has good to do. So he goes to get fish to bring home to his mother for supper. And what does he do in the alley? Just before he gets home, he saves the cat. It's another moment to showcase that this guy is a good man. He shares some of what little food he has with a hungry kitten out in an alley. How can you not like this guy? You want to see him succeed. And as an audience at this point, we don't really know what's happening or what he's dealing with or when he makes that phone call, we don't know exactly what he's getting into. We just think he's going to have an opportunity to win some things. And this is where the stakes are revealed. So the first half of that show, the whole half of the pilot is all about building up that character, who they are, what their stakes are, what their situation is, what they are dealing with, what their personal stakes are. They're taking the time to make us care about this character and building his world. We get the little setups of the girl that's being chased. We get the setup of him signing away his physical rights to the loan shark. We get the setup of this man in the suit playing this game. We get the setup of his school friend that went off to university, who then again, as a payoff, shows up in the game. So all of these setups are happening. We're building this mystery of exactly what is coming at this character. But the whole time, it's about making us understand who he is, making us care about him, making us want to see him succeed. So that when he wakes up in that game, we are locked in. We're ready to go. There's no way we're going to stop reading or watching because we want to see what happens to this guy who just needs a break. Just before he goes in the game, there's a final setup about his daughter being moved off to America by her mom and stepfather. Those are deeply personal stakes. This man's not going to see his daughter anymore. That makes him call. That makes him get to the game. Now, once we get in that game, it's all about setting up the stakes. There's a lot of mystery as well. So mystery, suspense, intensity, real world stakes, personal stakes amplified, but we never quite know what's going on. There's a great sense of a carrot at the end of the stick that we just keep going for because we want to see how all of these interesting elements are going to work together. And even when we get out on that field in this giant stage where they're about to play the red light, green light game, things get weird. We've got this voiceover telling us how simple this game is. Everyone's surprised. They don't know what to do. We meet the other characters. Which of these 456 characters we need to pay attention to. We need to hitch our reins to their wagon and remember them and pay attention to them because they will be the important ones. And then the game begins and we still don't know what's going on, but these two younger characters are all about getting to that finish line. And then we hear that crack of that weapon. We don't quite know what's happened. And then we realize that he's dead, but then things start again and panic ensues and there's bullets flying and hundreds of people are getting killed. And we now know, the true stakes of this game. You die if you lose. And it makes us bookend back to the beginning and remember what that character said about how if you step out, if you lose that game, you die. It all comes full circle there. And that's what's great about recalling things in any script. If you make us pay attention to something early on in a very dynamic and interesting way, when we get to a point in the script where you make us recall what we learned, we subconsciously go all the way back through that story to that moment and then replay it quickly in our heads to get back to where we are at. And that's a great way to have your reader remember everything that you need them to know and to stay in the momentum and the pacing of that story. We then spend the rest of that time sitting there watching on the edge of our seats as all of these people start dying. 
we're paying attention to certain characters who are doing very specific things and there's this beautiful moment where our leading character may fall and still be moving and get hit and someone he doesn't even know grabs him by the shirt and holds him in place. It's a great sacrifice moment for that character behind him because he has to use all of his strength not to move and to stay completely still, but he's then holding up a human being. How do you not move in that moment? It's incredibly tense. And as soon as that head turns around and they start running again, we are worried that that guy behind him just might not make it in time. And he does. And that makes us like him. So all of these characters that we see across that finish line, we are there looking at them, watching them, remembering the bad guy, the thief, the childhood friend, all of the helpers, the old man, all of the people that we will most likely be focusing on and having our point of view attached to throughout the rest of the series. And it ends with the ceiling closing and seeing that we are way out in the middle of nowhere. And again, that raises the stakes to let us know that the only way out of this is to play every single game and win. It's almost not about the money anymore. It's about survival because what trumps money? Your life, life or death. Life or death stakes trump everything. So when we sit there and it cuts to black, we now know what the stakes of the entire show are. We know which characters we're paying attention to. We're caught up in the idea of the mystery, the suspense. Putting everybody in masks really does make us wonder who's really behind all of this. It's a brilliant pilot episode. We love the character. We feel for him. We care about him. He has a lot to lose. He has people on the other side he needs to prove wrong about who he is. That's how you write a great pilot. You put all of those elements together by focusing on character more than anything else, putting them within that concept, creating an abundance of setups that put us further and further into the character's story. And then you end things with a bang and you put us in a moment in the end where it's impossible for us to not want more. Your pilot must make people want more. You need to end it in a place of shock and surprise. You don't have to necessarily kill 387 people. That's been done now, but you need to capture our attention. Squid Game is an amazing pilot episode. It's a project that is shocking and surprising. It's so simple in its concept. It's one of those concepts a lot of people have had. Right? Just like, let's take a bunch of people and stick them in a haunted house and see what happens. This has been done a million times. Let's have a survival game where the loser dies. It's a big concept. A lot of people have a similar type of concept they've explored, but it all comes down to the execution. Your execution is everything. So lean back on character, rely on character, let them tell you their story, and let us watch them grow so you can slap him in the face literally or figuratively and make us want to reach out and grab that hand and stop that from happening if you can do that you've got us hooked if you like what we're talking about here on our videos feel free to subscribe to our channel we have a lot of different videos on a lot of different topics whether it's to do with the craft or the business side of screenwriting you can check us out at scriptreaderpro.com and look at all the services that we have to offer. And you can see a lot of our other videos that we have put on here that can help you in your journey. We are here to help you get better with every page. So get better with every page. All right, till next time, write hard.